Identity 5 feels like a mess when you play it. What am I doing wrong? Where can I improve? Check out these tips that I give you as a present for Christmas. Let's open this box. Whoa, this is kind of bright. Okay. It's a mini cipher machine. You finished the first cipher machine that you found at the beginning of the match. Time to go to the next highlighted cipher machine closest to you. Wait, stop. That might not be the best idea. Going to the closest cipher machine to you is probably not going to end well for you or your team. Why? Because often you'll be at one cipher machine remaining and you'll find that the last three cipher machines you can choose from are all right next to each other. And all the hunter has to do to be able to guard them is just go for one to the other, forcing everyone off them, leading to a dragged out endgame and a lot of eliminations on the survivor side. How do you prevent this? Think about the layout of the cipher machines instead of going to the closest one to you. Think Think about leaving cipher machines untouched that are at a decently big distance from each other. This might force the hunter to use teleport early just so that they can slow down that last cipher machine that might leave them traitless for the exit gate portion of the match. It will give your team a chance to split up and decode different cipher machines and make it harder for the hunter to slow decoding and so many more advantages for you. This is called avoiding a 3 cipher or avoiding a 3 gen in Dead by Daylight. Okay, time for us to see what else is in this very bright box. Okay, let's put our hand inside. What is this? Seems to be some sort of rocket chair. Too often the teammates not get to the chair in time, arriving too late and the person on the chair is left until after half. Now to avoid the situation, if you are a dedicated rescuer and you see your teammate go down and they aren't nearby, stop decoding and start heading towards that down survivor immediately. This will give you more time to rescue and especially with so many hunters such as Disciple, Guard 26, Hermit and more having the ability to be able to slow you down at the rescue, you'll need all the time you can get to mind game the hunter at the chair. Another rescuing tip that might help you to avoid that terror shock is to trick the hunter into swinging too early and hitting you when you aren't rescuing so you can avoid the terror shock of course. To do this, consider using an emote next to the chair as even the most patient of hunter is looking looking for any movement that's out of the ordinary from a survivor that will give them that indicator that you're trying to do that rescue animation. Emotes are very out of the ordinary in terms of movement and will most often make a hunter swing in response. Running directly at the chair in low tiers will also often make the hunter think that you're going to rescue immediately. So make sure to double back at that last second to make them miss you or even hit that chair instead. This time we need to reach in again into this bright box. Some type of kiting object? Are you finding it hard to base chase survivors? It can be quite easy to hit them with your ranged ability at times, but sometimes the most frustrating moments are when that annoying doctor continues to loop you around that same two pallets. You keep falling for her tricks. You need to start conditioning survivors in chase. What do I mean? First, you need to understand that you need to learn how to use a variety of chase styles. Walking through pallets without swinging, walking through pallets whilst swinging, and swinging just in front of the pallet. Using a variation of these in a match will help you remain unpredictable and will force survivors to make mistakes. What is more important though is tricking the survivor you are chasing into believing that you are a one-trick pony. Often, it is best to walk through pallets without swinging a couple of times, maybe getting a pallet stun or something like that just once to trick the survivor you are chasing into thinking you are only doing a certain chase style. Then, when you least expect it, you swing in front of the pallet, hitting them and confusing them for the rest of the match. This is called conditioning and should be your priority, at least in your first chase, I think. Noticing those little micro movements of survivors will also help you too, as you need to distinguish the difference between a survivor kiting towards a pallet with the intention of dropping it or with the intention of walking right through it. It does take practice, but seeing them hug the wall and the pallet so suggests that they are planning to drop it at least. Okay. Oh look, it's a little figure. It seems to be a figure of Gardener. Sometimes we use our abilities just because we can. People playing Gardener will often go breaking through every single chair on the map. Mind's Eye players will almost always pop the cane at the beginning of the match. Prisoners will spawn and instantly connect the closest cipher machine to them. And the thing is, this gives the hunter a ton of information and pretty much wastes your ability. In the case of Gardener, breaking those chairs will probably never benefit your team. And in the case of Mind's Eye, the hunter finding you first is probably the worst case scenario 
here for you. Instead, I think you should use your other tools to help you in the match and wait for the right time to use your abilities. You have a multitude of other tools at your disposal. You have quick chat, persona web traits, heartbeat, and just general logic to help you deduce when is the best time to use your ability. If you are a perfumer, for example, save your perfume if you are already damaged, as getting down instantly after using a perfume is just a waste and it had little to no chance of actually helping you. And let's see. Oh, looks like Ripper. The early game is incredibly important for the majority of the hunters, and it is why a lot of hunters such as Hellumber fall to the bottom of the tier list. So logically, picking the best first chase is important, but with Cypher Rush continuing to get stronger with each and every patch, sometimes you are forced to chase the mercenary first. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. There are many survivors that will waste your time. Use this time to keep them off a Cypher machine until you have a better idea of where a better target is for you, and you also need to know when to drop chase. Yes, it is some wasted time, but in the long run, quickly getting your second target down plus the fact that you wasted the first survivor's time will give you a better chance at winning later in the game. Even if you did somehow get that mercenary or that first officer down, some of these survivors have long chair times. More time wasted. Time we reach in again. Okay, we have Perfumer. We've already mentioned why saving your perfumes when at half health might be the best idea in most situations. Let's discuss why it might be a better idea to even reconsider picking some of these characters in the first place. Knowing your matchups is incredibly important, as Perfumer may seem like a great idea in theory, absorbing multiple hits and denying the hunter an early chair. Yet with the current meta being heavily focused on presence, more so in rank with hunters such as Wax Artist, Sculptor, Breaking Wheel for example, doing their best to be able to get to full presence as fast as possible, now we see why giving hunters more hits isn't really the best idea for the rest of the match. Instead of Perfumer, maybe you should take Magician, who is essentially the same strategy but instead of awarding presents to the hunter when they get a hit on your illusion, instead gives them absolutely nothing, making it harder for mid to end game for that hunter specifically. Your teammates will have a much easier time rescuing you against the first presence breaking wheel than a full presence one, trust me on that. If you are still having issues playing solo in Identity 5, then you should watch this video here and learn about some of the new Persona web traits that you could consider taking for your next Identity 5 match.